And we are live with a really exciting episode today of All Things 3D. Today is January 8th, 2015. I'm your co-host, Chris, and we've got our co-host, Mike. He is on the floor of CES. He's walking around. Say hi, Mike. Hi. <laughs> so he's walking around. Me? Yeah, this is a, a, a showstopper, or, a, or I should say just a um, CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, goes on once a year in Las Vegas. And it's kind of where all of the uh, electronics companies go and unveil their uh, latest gadgets. So uh, if you don't already know about it, CES is definitely one of the shows that you definitely uh, don't want to miss, at least the news from. Um, and there's, uh, we got Mike, he flew out there yesterday, and he is walking around right now, and he's streaming live to the Google Hangout. And uh, tell us what you're seeing, Mike. Well, can you hear me pretty good? I apologize for some reason. I've got some technical glitches with my mic. Uh, however, I am recording this, the video, so we can always upload that later. So right now, I'm in the printer area of CES. They actually set up their own little area now. Uh, as you can see in front of me, I've got Fuel 3D. Uh, there you go, 3D printing presented by TCT. Uh, I think they just had a seminar. I'm going to turn in this direction, and we'll kind of walk down here. Uh, we've got some filament providers, and we've got some of the people that we've interviewed over the time um, that we're going to go through. Some of the people are brand new, and you know, because we're video, or, you can hear me okay, Chris. Not yeah, your head. I, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So I'll try and talk a little closer to the mic so that people can hear me. But uh, essentially, I'm going to walk through right now to give you kind of a little walk through, and then uh, we'll stop by and maybe talk to some people on the way. I kind of introduced myself on uh, yesterday, and then we'll go from there. Okay, here we go. So, Chris, I don't know how good the video is. If you want me to stop and just kind of pan, uh, just let me know. But yeah, right now, just, just go ahead and uh, give us a little look around. What are you seeing? Uh, just tell us, you know, uh, okay. find us something fun. You know, a lot so of... Uh, stop right here. Yeah. Kind of like in the middle of it, um, off to the right here is 3DP uh, Unlimited. Yeah, I read about this. Look at that. Look at that large thing there. Huh? Yeah, Can you yeah. See it? Yeah, they had, they had a print, uh, they had a print that was like $600 in material or something like that. Is and, that uh, huh? yeah, we'll have That's to. Pretty have, awesome. Wow, look at that snowflake. Look at the size of that thing. It's huge. So obviously the print bed is not very um, high, but uh, obviously the X1 is extremely large on that thing. So um, it, it appears that it is running an extrusion of some sort, but it's pretty neat. I want one of those. Well, the XY actually, pick up a card. Uh, from my understanding, Mike, the, card, the uh, XY actually, uh, the entry will raise up. Oh, the gantry will raise up. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So that whole gantry raises up, and so it actually does have, uh, I think, the largest print volume of any of the RepRap style printers. Um, well, wow. with the exception, probably with the exception of our friend John Ollie's uh, Delta printer. Well, that's pretty neat. Um, so, like I said, I'll just kind of spin around counterclockwise now, and uh, we'll look that over at Kudo 3D. I kind of talked to him yesterday. Hey, how you guys doing? My mic's not working, so you'd have to get a little closer. So who am I speaking to? Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Hi. Nice to meet you. So we're on All Things 3D. We're live right now. And uh, so my co-host. Um, so you make the Titan 1. And uh, we actually stopped by him. So uh, you remember them, Chris? I do indeed. Um, yeah, yeah. Them? So, uh, so yeah, definitely. Are. Got uh, different style of covers there. Um, yeah, I think we met them at the uh, San Jose. Yeah, in that's actually Ted Sayo, the CEO. Ted? Yeah. And Ted. he's setting up the uh, printer right now. Okay, tell him yeah. to turn around and say, "Hey, Ted, it's Mike from All Things 3D." <laughs> Hi. Hi. I got Chris on the other end here. We're live, so uh, say. <laughs> So we thought we'd stop by, and uh, yeah, we're catching everybody off guard here. So we're kind of walking through right now, so I may come back a little bit later. Right now I'm only feeding through this mic, and I've got a technical glitch. I don't know, I've got audio through it, but I don't have my shotgun working. So maybe I'll have it up and running a little bit later. So uh, anything you want to mention um, about the, uh, the Titan right now? 
I mean, it looks finished. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. We, we, we just finished our uh, Kickstarter uh, delivery and starting delivering our first uh, batch of uh, pre orders. That's about like uh, 350 units uh, overall. And, and the uh, Titan one is, uh, let me briefly introduce this is the more advanced technology based on. Uh, a uh, passive self building and that differentiate differentiate us from our other SLA companies. So the the most important thing in the SLA technology is how we separate the layers uh, created. And all 3D models they are formed by uh, layers and those layers uh, actually will stick uh, at the bottom of our raising container for all the SLA uh, bottom of time. And uh, it's very important that to ensure uh, a proper separation between the layer and the so we developed this uh, flexible uh, racing container to actually minimize the separation force. Yeah, we talked so, about that in our interview. So. Yes. So we don't have a lot of time. I want to move through. So Chris, do you have any questions for? Um, yeah. So okay. is is uh, are you shipping units? Yeah, kind of. Froze on the video here, are we, so hopefully we'll come uh, back. Are you, are am you, I still moving on your end? Are you yes? Are you shipping units already to the? Are you shipping are, units? Yes. We, yeah, we, we just completed 350 unit ships as of uh, last month. Oh, congratulations! Great. So, uh, so you have Kickstarter backers, right? Because this was a Kickstarter project. This was a Kickstarter project, right? Yeah. Uh, we completed our Kickstarter with uh, about 350 units. We made uh, over just under seven hundred thousand dollars. Great. So and and you've got uh, and so all your backers have been so fulfilled, or you still have some to go. Just showing me an example here. I've lost my eyes here. Can you see it, Chris? Yeah. Great. I see it. So, even though I can't see you guys, at least uh, we're still operating on your end. So that's good. Um, yeah. So what was your question, Chris? And I'll relay uh, it to them. So so you've only got a few more Kickstarter uh, backers yeah. to go, huh? Um, Chris, just have to say that again, Chris. So you've, he's, they've almost fulfilled all their Kickstarter orders. So you've almost fulfilled all of your Kickstarters. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So um, he wants to mention something about the, the Batman uh, bust here. Go ahead. Uh, this is a very low resolution print, and you can see how smooth it is compared to other models. And that's because of our technology. Okay. So did you hear that, Chris? Yeah, yeah, it looks so great. It's pretty awesome, and look at this thing here. This is actually impossible for some of our other competitors to print. So if I wanted to get one today, what would it Maybe cost me? Yes? Hand down a little bit, Mike. Let's check check that thing out. Okay, hang on. He wants to take that. Can you see it now, Chris? Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, that's excellent. Great so, detail there. Yeah, but due to the very very tight detail on that, only our self-peeling. PSP container can actually get this kind of resolution on this kind of model. And ask him if ask him if the container ask him if the, oh, container, ask him if the oh, containers we can buy the containers. I'll ask him in a minute. What's the cost again? The, the cost is below three thousand. It'll be below three thousand. Yes. Okay. And so your question again, Chris? Can we buy build vats from him if we've already got an SLA printer? Can we build? Can we sorry, buy? Fit? Can we buy the actual build vats from him? Can we buy the build vats from you? Yes. Yes. Okay, so if we've already got an SLA printer, we can buy the build. We can buy the, the container. Yes. Oh, you can buy the container, but uh, you, you need to make the maybe a modified structure in order to be compatible, like okay. the size. Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk later about yes. that. Okay, so um, is that it, Chris? Can we move on? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay. So let's go over to, oh, your favorite. This is Mark Ford. I gave him a card the other day. Um, you remember what they do, right? Wait, where, who is this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Mark uh, and I'm blind on my end for whatever reason. Let's <laughs> see if I can uh, bring it back up. 
Hey Mike. Okay. Hey Mike. Can you hear me? So go ahead. Oh, I'm I'm good now. Hey okay, Mike. So um, yes. Hey, can we uh let's let's take a little break. I'll cover some news items and see if we can get that shotgun mic working. The uh the webcam seems to be uh it's really hard to hear some of these people. If if there's any way we could get the shotgun mic working, is there is that at all possible? Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Okay. So uh yeah, so I'll touch on a few items um that I've seen um this week, or seen seen coming out of the news out of CES, because uh, obviously it's a uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on this week. A lot of people were waiting to pull the trigger um, on on their their projects. Um, so one of the one of the ones this is not CES related, but this is from Boing Boing um, Boing Boing dot net, and uh, it's about open source three D scans of museum items generate amazing new creative works. Um, they have some. They have scanned some of these uh, uh, news items, uh, or some of these uh, museum items, and uh, they are uh, pretty incredible scans. And they're actually manipulating the scan data, obviously, to make kind of cool uh, new types of art. And uh, so that was uh, one that I think I would mention while Mike is figuring out his uh, his mic situation um, and then obviously there's a there's a this is this is one from CES here and uh, it's a company called spectrum we've covered them before but they actually have a booth this year um, at CES and they are offering full color 3d FDM style printing um, so here it is printing on a Robo 3d um, really interested to have Mike go over and give us a find a demo of this because um, they're apparently there in Las Vegas and uh, here it is printing full color spectrum spelled with an O um, you can find out more there we go sounds like we got some audio from Mike I can hear you uh, let's turn up your mic a little bit And uh, we're going to go back to Mike. He's live on the CES show floor. Um, how we doing, Mike? That's good. I can hear. So uh, in the background here, you can see uh, Mark Forge. We just got done interviewing um, the Kudos team with the Titan uh, SLA printer. There was a Kickstarter. Apparently, uh, word on the street, or according to the uh, CEO, uh, they've shipped uh, 200 and some odd units. So, uh, so they've shipped quite a few units. And uh, right next door, they have the Mark Forged 3D, which is the uh, the holy grail, if you will, um, of 3D print, of FDM. They have. They apparently uh, they claim that they're uh, printing carbon fiber, which uh, is pretty would be pretty nice to have. We have proto pasta, obviously. We have some carbon fiber PLA, but um, we don't yet have real carbon fiber. So this prints in conjunction, I think, with nylon. But we'll find out some details hopefully here in a minute. We'll get some one on one. The CEO, CES uh, show floor starts to get pretty packed. Um, you know, everybody's coming out of breakfast right now and after their morning coffee and kind of starts flooding the show floor. It's a real popular show. Um, so that's why a lot of these uh, companies, like specialized companies like 3D printer companies, are starting to uh, embrace specialized specialty shows like the 3D printing, the inside 3D printing shows that are held in Anaheim and San Jose, actually all over the U.S., all over the world now. And uh, those are even starting to get pretty busy because of obviously the buzz surrounding 3D printing. So, can you hear me, Chris? Yes, I can. That's much okay. better. Well, actually, the shotgun works properly, but you won't be able to hear me very clear, um, but you'll be able to hear the people that we're interviewing. So that'll work out for you? Uh, awesome. Okay, so we'll get back in gear here. Hang on a second. 
But you can hear me yep. now. So it's built layer by layer, like a normal printer. Uh, you can hear me. In each layer, uh, you, you put down your nylon where you want it, and then you put down your fiber where you want it. Okay, here we go. So, so is it two, uh, two different... Uh, yeah, we have two different systems. That we have one that puts down the nylon, one that puts down the fiber. Yeah. In the same yeah. system. Down the nylon, one that puts down the fiber. And... One thing I will note that I've been uh, that's really nice of the new 2015 version of SolidWorks is that it lets you um, output AMF files, added manufacturing files. So if you're building an assembly with multi-materials, you can actually save that out as a multi-material model for something like the Mark Forge. So they can bring that into the software, like Cura or whatever slicing software. I'm sure they have proprietary slicing software for this machine. Not, actually, I'm not sure, but... Uh, and so you can take an AMF file, so you can actually slice multi-material. I was working yesterday with my uh, little spot task 4, and had my dual extruder, and actually did an ABSPT uh, some test print. So it's coming a long way. The software has a little ways to go, but um, but like I said, SolidWorks is re is ready to output multi-material files. Um, however many files you're working with, they can do it. So AMF is the new file format. So Mike, if you talk into the shotgun mic... Can you hear me? Can you, is there any way to take the shotgun mic off the top and use it as a regular microphone? There's a lot of, a lot of cameras going on here. So this looks like we got somebody from Mark Forge 3D. So I've got Chris, my co-host, on the other hand, uh, back at, uh, in California. So we've got Jeff Twine. Can you hear me out there? Can you hear me, Chris? I can hear you now. Okay, and can you see Jeff? I can see Jeff. Okay, so Jeff's going to give us a little bit of an introduction to uh, their printer here and kind of talk about it. So go ahead, Jeff. Awesome. All right. What we have here is a uh, the Mark One, which is uh, the world's first carbon fiber composite 3D printer. Um, we actually use two two print heads to uh, yep, to extrude uh, reinforced a continuous strand of reinforced fiber into a nylon part. So what we have here is is you can see the strands carbon fiber. Beautiful. And what you get. Our parts that are super stiff. So here's an example of the, the finished part. What we have here is a, a nylon wing foot for a race car, and uh, you can, as you can see, there's carbon fiber reinforcement. There's six layers, six 200 micron layers, and it basically makes it 10 to 15 percent stronger than 6061 aluminum. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to be getting me one of these. Tell, tell him, uh, tell him, ask him, uh, so, so again, remind Hang on a moment, Chris. Hang on. So for the listeners, uh, while we're waiting, I'll just go ahead and share the screen on mine. And uh, here you can see it. Here's the printer. And uh, they had pre-orders. Let's see if they have any pre-order a Mark One. Let's see what they are. So uh, so $54.99 for a printer. And that'll print carbon fiber. So I have no audio from you, Mike. And then, uh, and then for eighty-eight hundred bucks, you can get uh, you can actually print Kevlar. <laughs> we need one of these. Yeah, yeah, Kevlar carbon fiber, materials of the future, technology of the future. This is a this is an exciting uh, exciting booth here, um, Mike. We have no audio from you, so uh, maybe just switch back to your webcam if you can. I still have video.
So uh, let's check our uh, items here and see if I can uh, keep tagging along with the... So uh, like I was saying is uh, I can actually bring this up and kind of show you. Up, oh, we have some sound. So one of the cool things I, uh, I've been researching, because I've been, like I was mentioning with my TAS-4, I have a dual extruder attachment um, that I, I was testing with yesterday. I, I switched back to my single extruder because it's kind of, it's still testing phase. It's still in the testing phase. But um, one of the coolest parts about the 2015 SolidWorks is, like, here's a little, uh, this is a little piece I was working on, uh, I've been working on. It's just like a little holder that holds uh, um, my uh, like a little water filter in my office. So I just drew it up in SolidWorks, and I just wanted to test multi-material. Oh, we got audio. How do I sound? Yeah, we How do I got, sound pretty good. Yeah, we sound we sound we sound all right. How about now? Yeah, I mean. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's much better, Mike. Okay, so we sound, I sound good, right? You sound great. Okay, great. All right, so when just got a moment, I'll get back with him. Um, so here we go. Okay, so I've just given Jeff the, the microphone, and he should be, you should be able to hear him now. Go ahead, Jeff. Should I start over? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah, go ahead. We're ready. What we have here is the uh, Mark I Composite 3D Printer. It's the world's first and only uh, 3D printer that can that can print continuous strand carbon fiber, uh, fiberglass, or Kevlar. Just the Kevlar part right here. Um, basically, how it works is there's two print heads. One that does traditional uh, fused filament fabrication. Can you hear them? And the other. Yes. The other. The other that does uh, our proprietary technology, which is the the continuous filament fabrication. And what that allows you to do is create parts that are five times stronger than ABS, up to 20 times stiffer than ABS, with a uh, higher strength to weight ratio and 60-61 aluminum. So as you can see here, um, this is a, a wing foot for a race car, and uh, it's a nylon part that has six layers, six 200 micron layers of carbon fiber, three on the top, three on the bottom. And what that gets you is incredible stiffness. And strength. Awesome. What we have here is a is a space wrench that is Kevlar reinforced, and we're doing a, a sort of a sandwich panel construction, uh, and that gets you incredible stiffness and incredible strength. Wow. Sounds great, Jeff. So and uh, okay. And, and so and what are what? You can be a little bit closer. What program? Have, okay. Are they using SolidWorks to do? To, what we have to, here is a is a clear way of, of this part to show you that we first lay down some plastic, some nylon. Which is a, a really great, tough engineering plastic. Then we then we put down a continuous strand. It's probably hard to tell, but but this is one continuous strand that runs concentrically around the part. And then we do a, a honeycomb structure, another few layers of continuous strand, and you get the final part. You get is uh, about 10% higher strength to weight than 6061 aluminum. So for the first time, you can print at your desk totally functional parts. Uh, with the strength of metal. Sounds great, Chet. So Chris, do you have any questions? Yeah, and and so uh, I noticed what lately uh, yesterday actually I was I was playing in the new 2015 SolidWorks, and so he's playing with the 2015 SolidWorks. So he's got a question for you. So okay. I apologize that you can hear it. So go ahead. It, Chris. it allows multi-material AMF files. Is that what you what? So is that the same uh, file that you need to generate multi-material models? So he said that SolidWorks generates a new multi-material, was it AFM file? AMF uh, file. AMF file. Um, will this thing support that? Uh, not quite yet. Uh, we, we, uh, we, do, we, launched the, we actually launched the, uh, the Mark I at SolidWorks World in, in uh, January of 2014. So uh, we're definitely pretty close with, the, with, uh, with SolidWorks. We hope to, to um, create some... some some additional file types and, and uh, additional add-ons that would support the 3D printer 
But for now, uh, like most other 3D printers, we, we import STL files. OK, so you got all that, Chris? Yeah, yeah, great. So, so coming soon. Coming soon, right? <laughs> for the, no, the, the, the printer is available right no, now. No, for SolidWorks, the, the driver. Sorry? For SolidWorks, the driver? Yeah. OK, great. Well, thank you again, Jeff. I appreciate your time, and thank you for our patience. OK. All right, we're going to move on, Chris. And it looks like we've got great sound now, so and we've got great connectivity. So where would you like me to head? I'm just yeah, going to go down keep, here. Yeah, just keep uh, keep fishing on through. Weave it on through. Cool. If you see something that stands out. Okay. Uh, so New Matter wants to talk with us, so I will give her the mic. Hi. Hi. Awesome. So. Actually, we're going to hand this to somebody else. OK. We're going to hand this to Steve. All right, great. Although I wow. love being on camera. <laughs> I know there's someone back there. <laughs> Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. OK. Sorry. My co-host, Chris, is in the office. And uh, so you won't be able to see him unless you turn around and see his little face here. Right. But uh, he may have some questions for you. So why don't you just kind of tell us what uh, you're about, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, terrific. Well, New Matter makes consumer 3D printers. They're called the Mod T. Uh, the Mod T is designed to be a really easy to use and very affordable consumer level 3D printer. It's going to retail later this year for less than $400. Uh, it's designed by world-renowned design for frogs, so it really looks like something that belongs in your home as well. Wow. Um, let's see. So it's right over there, right? Yeah, so I'll take okay. you on a walk. Okay. This is New Matter. This is the booth. We've got a couple of demo units. One of them is printing as we speak. One of the really unique things about the Mod T is the way we move the build platform instead of the print head. Uh, this two-axis motion system is actually patent pending and allows us to provide those two axes of motion with a very small number of components, reducing the cost to manufacture the product and allowing us to sell it at a very competitive price. Very cool. Chris, you got any questions? Yeah, and so what kind of materials will it print? So what kind of materials can you print with it? I'm sorry? What kind of materials can you print uh, with this it? Is, this unit is PLA only. Uh, as we're designing for use in the home, we wanted to make it consumer friendly and avoid some of the odors that come off of ABS or some of the other materials. OK. There's a company. What's the name of it? Uh, Polymaker that makes a Polymix. Have you tried it with this yet? No, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble hearing you. I apologize. Um, there's a company, that, Polymaker, that makes a Polymax, which is a very rigid, um, actually, they say it has better strength than ABS. Okay. And I've been printing with it, and I'd have to agree, but it's PLA based. Okay. Maybe a little bit higher in temperature, like 220. Will this be able to use it? You know, I'm actually not familiar with that material, so I'll, I'll go back and do some research, and we'll find out. OK. Yeah, I would look into it, because it's an excellent material, and it'd be great if it would work with it. Oh, I'll, I'll try it okay. out. It's great. OK, Chris, any other questions? No, thank you very much. OK, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Thanks. OK, hey, here's your friends. And actually, there's a guy here. There he is. Hi, we're back, Fred. Fred, you got a moment? Hi, it's Mike. Oh. OK, can you, um, all right, all right. So actually, I know Fred, he used to work over at uh, either 3D Systems or Stratasys. And he's moved over to MCOR and likes it. But um, they have a small booth here. And I'm supposed to speak to Julie. Uh, there's Julie. Let's see if I can actually let's see if we can get in there. Uh, but while we're there, Chris, you want to talk a little bit about the M Core? Yeah. So the M Core is our, well, you know, uh, I think a really great technology. It's that uh, it's a it's a basically an LOM printer, but it can print the Iris, uh, which is their kind of top it's an tier LOM printer. printer. It's an LOM. They don't call it LOM. They don't want you to call it LOM because they want to call it their own proprietary technology. It doesn't actually use a laser. So it, it uses a blade. So that's the difference between LOM and their technology. But at, at the end of the day, it prints uh, cut. It uses cut pa pieces of paper as your material. So you actually use a ream of paper. And uh, their iris, the top tier machine, allows you allows you to print double-sided color around the edges, the perimeter of your objects. So you hey, Julie, Fred brought me over here. You want to give models. us uh, a little bit of a presentation? Hey, we, we've got our attention. So I'm um, Chris. Um, we were actually big fans, uh, fans of the MCOR. We've seen it about a year ago in, um, let's see, where were we at? San Jose. Yeah. And uh, we've actually talked to the dealer out in California. But maybe you can give us a little bit of overview for our audience. Uh, we're from All Things 3D. Yes. And like I said, I know Fred, when he was working, was it Stratasys before? OK. And um, so he told me to come in here and talk with you. So I'll let you 
talk. We sure. can all stop talking. So we're with MCOR Technologies, and MCOR manufactures the world's only paper-based 3D printer. And what that means is we use ordinary copy paper, the kind that you have in your office supply closet, water-based ink and water-based adhesive to produce very realistic, full-color models. Hey, such as Julie, can I have you talk more into the... the yep. that's an, okay, great. Thank you. Do you want me to repeat? No, go ahead. We, we still such as this hammer. This is 3D printed out of ordinary copy paper. It actually can hammer a nail. It's very strong. And the benefit of it is that it's uh, very eco-friendly. It only costs about $10 to print, so it's about an eighth of the cost of any other technologies. And it is full, realistic color. Sure is. Great. Um, There's a, a person bust of me down there. Do you want me to pick it up? Yeah, please. OK. Yeah. Well, how cute. As you can see here, I was scanned. This is me. And it's printed me to scale size down here in, in full realistic color. This wasn't painted. And you can see the likeness is, is pretty close. It is. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've been desiring. And, uh, you know, one of the things is that the pricing on this, if I remember correctly, is close to fifty or $60,000 with consumers and the service agreement. Is that correct? Sure. So this is a professional class 3D printer. So this printer in the U.S. does cost about $50,000. But the ongoing cost of print, again, is a fraction of the cost of any other technology. And it's very suitable for uh, uh, service bureaus to provide prints to consumers and professionals across all different uh, verticals, education and architects and manufacturers for concept modeling. So a variety of different applications. So is there a service bureau in California? I mean, is there a service bureau in California? Um, yes. Yeah, so. Um, We've, we've just hired a new uh, dealer in California, and um, they could very well offer 3D printing as a service as well. Okay. Do you know who that dealer is? I'm sorry? Do you know who that dealer no, is? No, I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, I don't, I don't okay. Well, we'll get back later with it. All right. Well, thank you. And, thank you uh, very much. And we'll move on. Chris, do you have any questions before I move on? Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to... Yes, please. So give me a moment, Chris. Excellent. Thank you. OK. Am I blowing up the mic, or am I OK? You're all right. OK. Actually, I'll bring it down a little, because they're asking me to, to speak up a little bit. So uh, we'll go from there. Hey, let's take a look at the Da Vinci's. Um, we've talked about them a lot, and because they're low cost, but uh, we've heard some, well, you know what we've heard, Chris. Uh, but they seem like they've got a few new line of uh, printers. Yeah, and they have, a, and I just read today that they have one for Newegg. If you go on uh, Newegg, they have one for three ninety nine. You get the uh, XYZ Da Vinci. So is it probably the one point zero? Here they have the retail price of four ninety nine, but I have seen it on Amazon for three ninety nine as well. So yes. it's probably this one. Uh, they also have the two, which is a duo, which is the dew filament uh, for six forty nine. And again, on Amazon, you can get it cheap in that. So these are very low cost printers. But one of the things that a lot of people have complained about with these is that their slicer needs uh, needs a little bit to be desired. Um, however, um, if you buy Simplify three D, it works with these. So there is good slicers out there if that's an issue. Um, so let's see if we can actually get somebody to talk to. Hi. Anybody want to talk to All Things 3D and kind of give us a rundown? Hi. We're from All Things 3D, and uh, we've talked about your printer several times on our podcast. And I've got Chris, my co-host, on the other end of this. Uh, could you kind of give us a rundown and uh, oh, course, take my yeah. mic for me? That's the one, one we start from the uh, yeah. one point no. Um, hi, all. We're here in XYZ's booth today. This is our... First, the Vinci 1.0, priced at 4.99, with a built bed of 8 by 8 by 8. It is a fully enclosed system with safety design, suitable for beginners and children use. Over here is our um, Da Vinci 2.0, with the same uh, features, but two color extruders enable you to create more creativities on your products. And here is our um, newest Da Vinci 1.0 which features Wi-Fi connectivity and built-in camera to 
and ensure the finest print job. Okay, and um, yeah, we've, we've heard of the other two. So uh, as you said, it's got Wi-Fi. I notice it's also got a color display. Uh, does this also have the newer processor in it? Um, so if you loaded it up from Wi-Fi, it loads quickly. Some of the problem with the older versions is that if you use the USB, it takes a little while. Right, um, right. So the performance on this one is better from the processor right, standpoint? Definitely. Okay. Okay. Um, um, do you have really some prints that we could take a look at from oh, this one? Okay. And with what the building of Wi-Fi feature, the printer is able to produce faster prints and more accurate prints on time. Okay, so what's its maximum or uh, maximum resolution? Oh, it's the DaVinci 1.0s and 2.0 features resolution in 100 microns to 400 microns. Okay, from pretty standard. 41 millimeters to 0.4 millimeters. Okay, Chris, do you have any questions? Yeah, and and, and again, uh, the, the the materials. What type of materials can be used with it? Uh, the one point, the Da Vinci series can print in ABS and PLA plastics, and uh, XYZ is also going to introduce flexible wood and refillable filaments. Okay, great. Um, so that's about it, huh, Chris? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Right. Do you also want to do the, the our, our new our yes, new ones? I would, please. Right, great. Okay. Um, can you do them? Yeah. Okay. Sure, of course. Yeah. Oops. Um, he's going to show us our new line. Have you guys done the AIO before? No. Yeah, maybe we can uh, just go around okay. have for, for everything. Okay. So what is this line here? Um, over here is XYZ's DaVinci 1.0 AIO with a 3D scanner and 3D printer all in one. We're the first one to make 3D printers and 3D scanner all together. It's a very revolution um, printer. The printer also offers um, 8, 8 by 8 by 8 build size with this two laser scanner, one on the bottom and one on the top, to ensure the best scanning quality okay. and to uh, eliminate all of the blind spots. Okay. And if somebody went out to your website, could they download one of your scans to look at later on to check its quality? Sorry, what is it? Could they, they download the scan on your website to check the quality? What, what do you mean download? Um, well, when you scan, you have a mesh file. Right. Can I download a mesh file of this particular scanner? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. From, from the printer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but do you have one on your website so I could take a look at its quality? Um, the website... You mean um, download the scan file? So it was a uh, right. PS file? Yes. Yeah, you, you can download that. Okay, great. Right. Oh, and okay. it's all it's from our software. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and, so, um, so what do you have on the other end? It looks. Huh? Uh, you have some SLAs that you're going to be putting out as well. Oh yes, we also have SLAs. Okay, you want to go ahead and look yeah, at those? Let's do okay. That. Now again, everyone, the, these particular printers are. Oh, it's on also the, the junior. Oh, okay. That's the junior. The new, the new oh, three forty nine. So that probably nice. means it's going to well, be this 300 is our, um, or 250. DaVinci Junior. Okay. It has a smaller build size, more suitable for classroom and beginner use. At the price of 349, it is the best volume in the industry right now. It ha also features the fully enclosed system for safety issues. It also has two unique features. First one is its automatic calibration system bed. With this, beginners and children will never have to manually calibrate their print bed before every print. The second feature is this one button removal extruder. With this feature, user is able to replace and, re and repair the most broken parts of a 3D printer, which is the extruder. Okay. Well, not to compare it to the MakerBot. The MakerBot has come out with something similar, but that's been the, the, the worst problem with theirs is the removable print head. It um, doesn't say secure. Um, do you have that problem, or do you think that might be a potential problem, or if you feel that you've got it? On the extruders? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. but you're saying that it doesn't say secure? Right, on the MakerBots. Uh, oh, and they you, also have the same system. So I see, are I you see. having problems with yours, or do you feel like you've solved that engineering uh, problem? We currently have no, haven't gotten any complaints, but that's also due to uh, they have not been officially released. Okay. But from our engineering, this has shown no problem from falling off. Okay. Do you right. mind if I touch it? Yes, please. Okay. How does it secure? Is it magnet-based or is there uh, a clip-on? There's actually um, 
a clip right here. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So, um, so it looks like a two-point secure, secure to system. Yeah. It seems fairly secure. Right. Okay. Chris, you got any questions for him? No, this all looks great. I'm. Uh, okay. So let's I'm go ahead and head great. down. Oh, wait, I want one of those. <laughs> you see that, Chris? The, yeah. the little robo head. <laughs> Nine. That's a thousand. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> that's neat. You, yeah, that's our um, service robots. And you sell that, right? Yes, we. we so it's a thousand dollars or nine ninety nine. Nice. Okay. And um, it does automatic GPS navigation, and uh, video conference, as well as um, product explanation for stores. Pretty cool. Okay, well, that's not what we're here for. So this is your new. Oh, this is your three uh, D printer. This is our printer. printer. Boy, you just got a full right. lineup of printers now. So what kind of food does it print? Uh, actually, the one that prints uh, the more advanced ones over there. OK. So like, maybe we can cover that after the Nobel. Sounds good. Yeah. OK, so let's keep going. So quite a big booth they have. Yes, they have a very large booth. And obviously, they, because they've got a large number of printers. Okay, so this is their new SLA printer. Um, oh, no worries. It's okay. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, we're oh, close sure. enough. Well, not only does XYZ satisfy the, the needs for a consumer and beginner in 3D printing, we are also now introducing our newest SLA technology, Nobel 1.0 printer. The Nobel 1.0 uses resin and laser technology to print the finest and professional prints that customers require. Wow, pretty neat. The printing too. resolution is 35 microns. It can print from 0 0.035 millimeters. OK. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get a little closer look. It right, looks a lot like the inside also some of a Form 1. Uh, was that uh, intentional? I, I noticed that the the build tray is very similar, as well as the the actual uh, the bed itself. And so um, you said 35. So this is the quality. May I, may yes, I touch of it? Yes, of course, okay. please. Uh, can you see that, Chris? Yeah, it's it looks like pretty pretty good quality. Pretty good. There's a, a little bit of ridging in there, about the same as a Form One. Um, maybe that just that material there. Let's look at the roof. They printed a larger roof. So what's the volume size on this? The volume size on this is it's on five by five by seven point nine. Okay, so it's very and similar to a four one. Right. Okay. But uh, at the price of fourteen ninety nine, it is I the most the price. Volume, right? Okay. The best volume you can find in the industry right now. Okay. Pretty good. So is these are these both noble ones? Right. 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 Okay. This one just without the cover. Okay. Well, that's pretty nifty, huh? And that's extremely a good price there. Right. Okay, Chris. Well, I'm going to move on to somebody else. So again, thank you for Chris, taking us um, on this tour. Yeah. And uh, any other questions for you? Uh, food cleaner as well? um, yeah, it's right over here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead and talk about it a little bit. So they also have a food printer, Chris. Wow. Um, this is XYZ's um newest 3D food printer. Besides implementing 3D printing in plastic, XYZ has now bring 3D printing to foods. The 3D printer is able to take three different materials and dispense them. You can make food from cookies, cake, to... And do you have a sample there that I can take a look at? Right, so of course. Um, let me take a sample for you. Okay. Well, if you can take a look real quick, I'll bring the camera in. Yeah. It's kind of cute. Look at the little uh, brontosaurus cookies <laughs> there. <laughs> and look, some cakes. So they, they look like they have um, some extrusion for decorating cakes. Look, there's a piece of toast there. Oh, here we go. Oh, I get a cookie. Some samples that Excellent. 
anyone can try it if you're there. Okay, well, I'll, I'll bring it with me, and right, uh, can I have that one, too? Um, and I'll bring one to my co-host, so nice. Chris. Um, I don't know what they're made out of, but maybe maybe you'll at least taste it, right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> they're cookies. So what is it going to cost? Um, the cost will be below 2000 but we have not officially set the price. 2000 Chris. Right. 2000 We plan to release them in quarter three this year. That, that's, wow. Well, you guys have an extremely large and excellent booth here, and I really appreciate your time, mm -hmm. Frank. And uh, we'll, we'll probably ask for an interview later on. So um, you got a card or something? Um, I passed up all my card. Uh, okay. Not yesterday, but I can I'll tell you what, how about I give you my card? Oh, Grace, Grace. I can also give you my thread. Just try to put my name on it. Okay. Okay. I'll give you my. Okay. Oh, thank you very uh, much. Great. My name is Frank. All right. Oh, that's my email too. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Great. Let me put that in there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was an excellent booth, huh? Hey, look what we got over here. We've got Autodesk. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I think, let me see if Jesse is here. Uh, yeah, actually, Jesse's standing right over there. Hey, Jesse. It's Mike Balzer from All Things 3D. Hi. Got Chris on the other end here. You got a moment to talk? Okay. Here's a mic for you. Thank you. Bring it up close to your mouth. So, Jesse, we've talked a lot on our podcast, and now I'm seeing you in person, and it looks like Autodesk has a pretty good presence here at CES. So can you talk a little bit? And then maybe we can sneak over and look at the Ember, too. So go ahead. Yeah, so uh, what we're doing at CES is we're really trying to up-level what 3D printing means. You know, as we walk around this hall, you see a lot of uh, great-looking plastic tchotchkes that you can sit around your house, and those are fantastic. But what we're looking at is how do we take it to the next level, and how do we help design build that out? So all the things in our booth, from a great dress uh, made by Nervous Systems to this 3D printed titanium bicycle uh, that's sitting here in front of me, that's like full of haptic technology. You know, that's all about kind of upping the game of design and upping the game of 3D because, as we know, in 3D, complexity comes free. Uh, so we want to make sure we're helping people design complexity into their objects now. And one of the ways we're doing that is with Spark and Ember. Um, Ember is right down here. We're going to try to sneak around the crowd okay. to see it. So how's our quality then, Chris? Maybe we can get yeah, over here. It looks, it looks pretty good. Good. So here is the... There it is. ...awe-aspiring Ember. Oh, so they actually have. So right now we're in an early explorer program. Um, you can see it. Look, guys, it actually rest. is real. It's not just Photoshop. Look, yeah. I'm touching <laughs> it right now. <laughs> what's the little one? The the printer on the right is so actually. So Chris is printing, asking, uh, what's this little one here? build volume here. Okay. Yeah, so this is our cleaning station. This isn't something that, uh, this is a printer agnostic. Anything that's using a UV curable photo resin would be able to use this. So it's just a way we found that uh, if you're curing the object once you're done, cleaning it up while it's completely submerged in isopropyl alcohol, like, you get way better results with that. Excellent. What's the price of that? I know Chris and I can both need yeah. one. How much? What's that? How much is the... Uh, so it's uh, there's no MSRP on it yet, but the Ember Explorer program is for $59.95. Okay. And that includes the, the cleaner there? What if I just needed the cleaner? Um, you know, I'm not sure on the cleaner. We need to, <laughs> we need to figure that out. <laughs> Not 100% released. Uh, this is our first venture into hardware. We're really excited about it. There's okay. a lot of potential here. Well, sounds so, good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Yeah, did you talk about the Spark platform? Yeah, so, so one thing that you'll notice is with every single booth out here today, we've all solved the exact same problems. Yeah, so... Actually, bring a little... Clarity. Okay, so rather than reinventing the wheel with all these things, we're releasing the Spark platform as a way for people to innovate and build on top of these basic solutions. Really cool. Very cool. Chris, you got any questions while we're here? Yeah, this just looks great. I'm real excited. So $59.95 gets you into the Spark program. Oh, cool. Hello, yeah. world. Actually, you have to join the Spark, right? You have to get into the Spark initiative program, and then they'll give you a, a rebate or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, for Spark, it's uh, we're still taking join. You know, Send an email. Tell us what you're up to. 
and we'll contact you and let you know, you know, if it's going to fit in right now or not. Um, we're looking at probably about six months out down the road to really re fully release the platform. Well, I've but been we are accepted, previewing a but I don't have six thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. So On the platform I'll itself, it. though, we've released an early version of a one-click print studio. Really? I can show you the results of that. Really, okay, if you want sure. To see That's kind of nifty. Sneak in. So the idea behind Print Studio is that um, you shouldn't have to generate your own support anymore. You know, as a designer, you want to design an object, hit print, and then see it come out of the printer. So if you look here, this is uh, the platform. It's upside down from the enter printer. But what they did is they had the, the model, and then they hit print, and um, you can see all the support structures. Looks like they were generated in Mesh Mixer. You can kind of see the current theme. Um, <laughs> let me just break those off. And this is all castable resin, which is awesome as well. For those so of metal actually, heads this there. can be done in mesh, mesh, me, mesh Mixer now, right? Yes, this can okay. be accomplished with Mesh Mixer manually uh, if you'd like to do that, or you can go in and just hit the automatic button, okay. so you can in use mesh that in your Mesh Mixer FDA or machines. in this application you're talking yeah. about. Okay. So did you hear that? Now you can do yeah. it all in Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is just becoming that go-to product for everything. I really like it. I actually just got finished doing some smoothing the other day, and it actually sometimes works. Sorry, 3D code a little bit better than 3D code, and it's still free. You guys are, you rock. <laughs> we try our best. Yeah. <laughs> so anything else before we leave your booth? Let's go see the dress and then, uh, okay. oh, we should probably see Voxelate, which is kind of the highlight of the show. Okay. Voxelate, the highlight of the show, he says. All right. So Voxelate is a 3D printer that also prints circuitry directly into the printer. Oh, yeah. So Very as nice. you're printing with PLA, it's also laying down uh, a layer of conductive silver so you're having you know your circuits inside of you can see it in the video here can you see that? you're able to implement your components laying down the silver and then that's awesome. when it comes off the lights already going <laughs> so how much um, so this is going to retail at 8999 right now um, but they're still in a prototype stage so we'll see where it goes and we have also announced a software package to do this where you can bring in any STL file um, into a program that we're calling Wire, and then you can add the circuitry into it so that you can use these type of printers, as wow. they will be the future within the next two or three years. So, Chris, you got anything to, to questions on this? Or? When, and we can get one when? When? Sorry? When can we get one? When can you get one, mm -hmm. or when can the audience get one? Yeah. Uh, when can the audience get yeah. one, and then so, when can I get one? Um, we don't know a release date yet. They're still looking at manufacturing. We're going to probably say in the next uh, two to three months. Okay. Yeah. Wow, quick. Oh, you see that? They just made a little... <laughs> little quad. quad. <laughs> very, very cool. So did you win a show award for this? What's that? Did you win a show award for this? Uh, no, but okay. this is like... It's the coolest thing. I mean, if you walk around the 3D printing sphere, no one's doing this type of stuff, and these guys are just amazing. Yeah, and amazing to work with as well. Very, very cool. Yeah. So this is Voxel 8. So they're not necessarily Autodesk. They're another company. Yep. Yeah, so Voxel 8 is their own printing company, and we developed the software called Wire to help people create things in Voxel 8. Okay. Great. Okay. So let's keep going around. What, what do we want to look at now? You mentioned the dress. Is that over here? Oh. Okay. Let's go take a look at it. So let's go look at Yeah, this is Nervous Systems. And we may have just cut out. And I will let them uh, actually talk for themselves because okay. they happen to be with us. Hey. All Things 3D is a podcast. Um, and we're live right now. now. So oh, great. Talk about the dress, sure. Um, so I have with me my second ever 3D printed dress we've created. It's called the Kinematic Dress. And the story behind it is how can we create a custom fit wearable dress that is usable straight out of the machine with no assembly. So this dress has over 3,500 moving parts, but they're all printed completely assembled. Uh, additionally, the dress is larger than the machine that made it. So the idea behind that is we can simulate the behavior of that fabric and fold it up and find a smaller form for printing. So similar to how you would fold a t-shirt to put in your drawer, we fold up the dress and we print that folded dress, uh, which is very small and efficient. Very, very cool. Mind if I touch it? Touch it? Can I touch uh, it? I can't hear. What is it? Yeah, I, sure. Oh, okay. You can definitely touch it. So, 
<laughs> That's kind of neat. So they're all interlocked. Do you see yeah. that, Chris? Yeah. They're uh, all interlocked, so it behaves sort of like a fabric. But very, very cool. What, print, what printer did they print this on? What type of printer did you print it on? This was printed on an EOS center station printer, so it's a selective laser sintering machine that fuses together nylon powder. Okay, so this is a nylon powder there. Very cool. So if I were to make one of these, how much would it cost? Uh, well, right now we have some apps on our website that you can use to design your own accessories. Most of those things like uh, braces and necklaces cost under $100 to make a completely custom piece. The dress is going to be considerably more expensive. We're not selling them quite yet, but a dress would be in thousands of dollars for ice range rather than hundreds. <laughs> I'm going to get my wife one of those. Yeah, she'd kill me. Okay. <laughs> Neat, uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. So, Jesse, anything else? Are we about wrapped it up? We've kind of wrapped it up. <laughs> well, again, Jesse, thank you. Here, take it. We appreciate you for coming on. You know the best thing about these shows is you can stand next to co-founders of places like Type A Machines. Just bump into them in the hall. It's kind of <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, so do you know him, Chris? Hello, Chris, still there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Oh, <laughs> I think he dozed off there. Well, again, thank you, Jesse. Thank you. We'll talk later. Okay, so let's see where else we can go. Mm, well, it looks like 3D, uh, 3D System has a huge booth as well. Do you see that? Yeah. Uh, I see Ultimaker. Saw... Yeah, do you want me to head over to Ultimaker? I think well, I will. We might... Yeah, we might want to see what they've we'll got come back. cooking. Actually, Eric invited me over earlier, so I don't know if he's still there. If he is, uh, we'll talk. So Let's navigate through here. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is our friend from India. You remember? Yeah. There it is. In what? So uh, if you remember, we've got uh, Sander. Sander is over there. He's obviously talking to somebody. And uh, yeah, here he comes. Hi, Sander. I want you to take Hi. our mic. Give us a. Uh, Hi. Uh, so if you remember Sander, he was the tall guy that you saw it at. Uh, Can we move the other Maker. side of the booth? It's hard to uh, hear you. Sure. Let's go. Yep. So we've had Sander on a couple times, a couple of our round it's tables. Great music, but uh, sometimes uh, yeah. difficult. Actually, to Actually, if you bring it up closer, then yeah, like this. Yes, excellent. Okay. So, like I said, Sanders has been on our round table, and uh, why don't you kind of just tell our audience what we've got here. Anything, oh, looks like you've got your new one up there, huh? That's the two extended, and what makes the two different, are the two extended different than the previous version? Okay, um, I didn't really hear what you were saying, so I'm just going to make a guess and tell you what we've been doing here at CES. <laughs> uh, at the first day of CES uh, online, we launched a new website, um, which... Uh, emphasizes our open source nature. Um, it is um, looking for the uh, better interaction with our community, putting them on stage, telling their story with pride, show that can be done in either words or images, but let them know, let the, the, other, the entire community know what everybody is making and doing and what everybody is using 3D printing for um, as a source of help and inspiration. Uh, besides the new website, uh, we also have launched or expanded our uh, range of Ultimaker 2 products. The Ultimaker 2 got quite some traction in 2014, where it uh, won the uh, Make Shootout. Uh, and in the 3D Print Show, it was awarded as the um, uh, uh, best consumer product. That kind of inspired us to expand the range with an Ultimaker 2 Go. We have one over there. It's a smaller design than the Ultimaker 2. The Ultimaker um, Mini. Yep, it comes uh, with a, uh, a transport uh, container. Uh, that means if you travel a lot between the office and home um, or work, it's very easy to take with you. You can carry it on your shoulder or carry it behind you with wheels. Um, because of its uh, smaller size, it, the, the heater bed is not a requirement. That means you can start your print faster. You don't have to wait for the heater bed when it to heat up. And uh, so this is a very fast printer. Besides that, it offers the same high quality as the Ultimaker 2. Um, yeah, it looks just like an Ultimaker yeah. 2, except... It's a very cute printer. I love it. <laughs> so what's the price on this one, Sander? The price is uh, 1400 uh, US dollars. Oh, okay. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. It actually looks like it's got the same extruder and uh, print head, huh? Yep. It has, yeah, 
because, uh, uh, well, like I said, with the uh, 2014, the success of the Ultimaker 2 and the range make it this family more available to a wider range of, uh, of users. Yeah, and besides the Ultimaker to go uh, over there, okay. put my water bottle here. Uh, we also have the uh, Ultimaker 2 Extended. It has uh, also the same quality as the Ultimaker 2, but with a larger build volume, so you can print taller models. Just for those users who came short that uh, 10 extra centimeters, uh, the Ultimaker 2 Extended is a, is a great choice for maybe more the, the prosumer who print larger models. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, so what's the price on this one? The price for the Ultimaker 2 Extended is three thousand uh, US dollars. Three thousand. Okay, yep. so it's about the same um, price of the original uh, Ultimaker 2 when it came out last year. Um, I think it's uh, a little bit higher. Uh, the Ultimaker 2 is twenty five hundred dollars, and it uh, remains the same price. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, three thousand sticks in my mind, but maybe okay. that was with shipping. Or it could be that a, a certain reseller may uh, added a little bit price because the uh, there was a large run on the Ultimaker 2s. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions, Chris, while I'm here? No. Is there anything else new that he wants to show us? Anything else new? Uh, well. We have quite some impressive uh, prints. I always Let's love to put them. the uh, the users in the spotlight as well. Okay. Um, well, you probably are already familiar with the dress made by the XYZ workshop. Um, actually, I am not. It, it also comes with a train. I don't know if you can see it on the picture, but we left that one out because we didn't want any audience on the uh, on the show to uh, travel upon it. Uh, <laughs> but it, it is a great showpiece like this. Excellent. Excellent. I actually what's this one up here? I, yeah, Michael. I also have a uh, have a um, something as a little surprise for you. You'll be the oh. first one to see it. Actually, okay, good. Well, uh, unless you've been here at the show, obviously. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what he's got to show us. All right. Uh, a lot of people already have seen the lightsaber uh, before. It was made by uh, uh, Velcro. Yes. One of our users at Ultimaker. Um, we've been, uh, like many of you also know, we are involved with Enable. And um, one thing that I've been working with them is to create a customized uh, Enable prosthetic hand, um, which uh, once the project is finished, uh, we're going to uh, share it with the community, or with the Enable community, uh, to select one child that can have this customized prosthetic hand. Very good. Um, Let's we have it, it here on display. It is a steampunk Iron Man hand. <laughs> it's not yeah. quite finished yet. It's a work in progress. But this will give you a pretty good idea of what it will look like in the end. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Hey, and over here we've got Velcro and oh, geez, and the Ducati Superbike. Yes. Also, the robot is made by uh, by Aaron. Um, oh. oh no! Oh, there goes my camera. <laughs> it's one of my favorite prints, and the Ducati. I th we've never brought it to the uh, to any shows. This is also kind of like a uh, um, yeah, first time. Now, do you know the backstory behind your your robot there, uh, which was by Ronan? Do you know where he's from? He, the, uh, he's from India. The yeah. designer. Yeah. Yeah. He actually was a. We did an interview with him. Yeah. Uh, very very nice guy. But he first said, "Yeah, I'm still living with my mom because I was laid off from my 3D job." Yeah. Um, yeah so, we, but hopefully that's all changed for him. Yeah, we uh, we love to get involved with our community members. We also have some here at our booth. Um, and last year when we were at the Maker Fair in New York, we also invited Aaron to fly over from India to the Maker Fair in New York so we could meet him in person and show our gratitude uh, to the work that he has been done, and we hang out with him through the entire week, and oh, we fine. had a great time. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. Love to have him on. So, yeah, I wonder, um, does he have anything else that's coming out? Do you know? Sorry. Does he have a new product coming out, Ronin Two or something like that? Well, we uh, I saw the large one in, there. Yeah, in the Maker Fair in New York, we had a larger version of the Ronin figurine. It is not fully articulated like the smaller one, but not less and any less impressive. It is a stunning. Uh, three feet tall. Wow. So if you remember, we did an interview uh, with Ronan, uh, actually about the Ronan. What was his name? Do you remember, Chris? Um. What's what? Alan, right? Alan. Ronan was done by Alan. Uh, Aaron. Aaron. Aaron okay. Thomas. Right. Aaron, Aaron Thomas. Aaron yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, he's a really nice guy, as mentioned, from India. So we've kind of traveled around the world to get a bunch of people on our show. And it looks like he built a special, as you mentioned, three-foot version. So um, hopefully I'll get in contact with him and see what else he's been working on. Yes, you should definitely. Yeah, he made the, uh, the smaller road. It was a project by himself. Um, I got to meet him kind of by chance in the very early stages of the project and we stayed in touch ever since. And I was so impressed by the Ronin figurine uh, that we started talking and he made this uh, larger Ronin, especially for us as a show model on our events. And uh, it, got a lot of, it gets a lot of attention and um, yeah, it, it's a great print, it's a very tal talented artist. Yeah, totally agree. Well, you've got a nice booth here and uh, yeah. Ultimaker is an awesome printer. Thanks. And, and I, as you know, I was using it for a year, and uh, it was one of my better printers. But sadly, I don't know you know the story, but it's departed. It's now got a new home in Florida. But uh, I'm going to have to get one of those little tiny ones as soon as I get $1,500. Pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> so again, Sander, I appreciate you coming on with me. Yeah, well, my pleasure. And uh, we'll talk again. Maybe I'll get you back on a round table uh, for yeah. next year or next year, this year. Okay. I'll be happy to. All right. Thanks. Okay. okay. So let's see. You want to let's go over in this direction here. So I'm going to skip 3D system and maybe come back to them. Um, we're about half our battery. And what's our time? 11.14. So we've got about 45 minutes. So how are you doing, Chris? You hanging in there? Yeah, hanging in there. Right? This is uh, this is fun to walk around the show. Okay, so this is TCT Mag. So Sculptio, we've uh, actually I have worked with them. They uh, are like a 3D print distributor, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they provide they're like Shapeway, and uh, they've got a place in San Francisco, and they can actually get you product cheaper, not necessarily cheaper, faster but not necessarily cheaper than Shapeway. Um, and they use, I think, a 3D system uh, SLS type printer to do some of their stuff here. And I guess here's some samples of it. Um, I'm not going to bother them, but uh, you can find them on the web. So if you don't have your own printer, or if you need a lot, one of the things that they, uh, they're promoting is kind of being your manufacturer so they can do volume printing. But I didn't find the fi uh, prices that competitive. So let's go to Shining 3D. Uh, hanging over here. I talked to them yesterday. So it looks like, can you see that, Chris? Yeah. So it appears that they also make a, uh, a scanner. Uh, so maybe we'll get a chance to actually talk to somebody. But we can see them actually. So it looks like it's a projected pattern type scanner. Looks like he's scanning Beethoven. Let me see if I can get in there and look at his software. So it's interesting. It's kind of like the Artec. Uh, quality looks pretty good. You seeing that? Yeah. Here they scanned the GI Joe on a turntable. You see that there? So, you know, the problem is the Artec is a great scanner, but it's $10,000. So let's see if I can find out what this thing costs. So Shining 3D. I don't know why that uh, rings a bell with me. Chris, do you, yeah. have you heard of them? No, never have. You know what? I guess maybe if you look them up on, on the web while we're talking, then you can feed my ear. Um, and kind of talk about them a little bit. So I'm uh, not finding anybody. Let's see if I'll go over here. Excuse me. Yeah. 
dining. They look, well, they look pretty busy, so and they've got a small crew here. So it looks like they're actually printing little quartz. You see those here? Yeah, That's they're trying to, yeah. So it looks like they do laser printing inside quartz. Or quartz. That's kind of a glass or um, crystal. It's called the Argus Pro, 3D laser engraving machine. Um, pretty neat. Yeah, it's too bad. I, I'd like to know what the price is on their scanner, and that's kind of neat. Obviously, it's not what we do, but I guess that would be good for kiosks and things like that. So you could scan somebody and then immediately put them in quartz or uh, crystal. Okay, well, I'll come back. Let's keep going. Um, hey, actually, let's come back. Hi, how are you? Yep, how about I give you a mic? And So I don't know. We talked to them in... Um, uh, San Jose about a year ago, if you remember, Chris, they have, and you've actually tried it out. Remember that pen I had, and you put on some glasses, and you can actually work in 3D? Do you remember that? Yeah. Leo, it's Leo Poly. Okay. And uh, so this is that same company, uh, but they also do a lot of software. So maybe you can give us a little bit of a rundown. Um, what's the name? Roland. Okay. So um, Roland, kind of tell us a little bit about yeah, Leo Poly. Poly is basically a, a missing link in the 3D Leopoly is basically a missing missing link uh, in the 3D printing ecosystem. Um, this is a, a 3D customization and 3D design uh, application. Uh, so you can basically design or customize whatever object you'd like to print out with, with any of the printers you can see here. It's easy, it's browser-based, uh, and if you're a company, you can set up your own uh, vase customization or phone case customization uh, application. Uh, so finally, we now have the tools to create by ourselves our own loved and personalized things. So if I remember correctly, you also cater more to the educational market. So you're getting uh, students. Sorry, I cannot uh, hear you at all. Yeah, that I'm seems sorry. to be a problem. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, I'm getting my feedback. I'm going to hang on a second. Let me bring okay. this down a little test, test. Okay. Can you hear me now? So you can hear me now. Yeah. So this is using the educational market as well, right? Yes. Okay. Because it's very easy to use. Yes. Um, when I was talking, and I can't remember his name, about a year ago, I think we were just starting to get involved with it. So how has the market grown for you? In the education market? In the education market? Yes. Um, you know, printers are getting out there in schools. And uh, the the usual question from teachers and schools that's great but what can I do with the printers uh, how do I create uh, content how do I engage students and this is a great answer for that because it's easy it's browser based and teachers just can set up their own private gallery and invite the teachers in a private uh, uh, gallery and interface uh, and this is very well appreciated so it is a growing market we see a great potential this is something that uh, teachers who are open-minded and who already have a 3D printer in their schools can easily apply and use as an engaging uh, 3D customization tool. Great. Well, thank you, Roland. Thank we you. do appreciate it. Did it make any sense? Yes, it did. Okay, great. Yeah, and we've actually played with it. I actually have one of the units with the 3D. Yeah, so so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I didn't see that. That, that looks uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so actually, we're, we're live right now. We're doing okay. a Google Hangouts. That's one of the reasons I have it set up on it. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Roland. So look who we got here. Let's see if we can find John. That looks like John over there. Hi. You see him, Chris? Yeah. We're in the See Me CNC booth. Oh, okay. Steve, um, how about John? Is John here as well? Okay. All right, we'll give him a moment. Hi, Steve. All things 3D. All things 3D. Oh, my God. Yeah. How about giving us a little bit of a rundown? What would you bring with you today? I meet you in live. Yeah, I don't where's know. That's good. Where's the crazy background? Um, I should actually <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I've got my uh, blockles. I don't know. Why don't you tell us what you brought here? Tell us what we brought here? Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm Steve Wygant. I have to bring it up a little closer. Hi, I'm Steve Wygant from CME CNC, uh, a.k.a. Part Daddy. <laughs> We're uh, live here at the... Uh, the CES 2015 
we have the, the Ryan and the, the new Eris that we brought with us. Oh, the new Eris. Uh, the Eris is a little PLA printer that's new. It's all injection molded. It is uh, going to be available in March. Its retail price is going to be about five hundred ninety nine dollars, and uh, you can take a look at it uh, yes, if you please. walk over here. Okay. Uh, around this side, uh, we're printing a Benjamin Franklin yeah. from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So there it is. That's so it features eye. it features a uh, uh, acetyl slides instead of a, a bearing. So we. We save a lot of uh, cost in doing it that way, but we can also control the accuracy because we manufacture all of these parts back in our shop in Indiana. Sounds good. So what is the accuracy? The, the accuracy of this will be uh, much like our other printers. It's a 100 micron. Um, we're printing the, uh, the 200 micron layers, so 0.2 millimeters. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun little printer. We expect to sell quite a few of them and get people started with 3D printing with this machine. Sounds good. Hey, Chris is asking for a pen. Can we get a pen? No. A writing pen? <laughs> Actually, he did not want a pen. <laughs> so, again, the, the price on this will be five. The, the price is going to be 599 retail. Uh, very reasonable. Yes. Um, and as you know, awesome. Chris has a Rostock Max. He yep. loves it. And. Uh, I guess you cut your teeth on it in this market. I'm talking for him now. Um, but uh, he is on the other end. Chris, you got any questions while I've got uh, Steve here? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I'm I'm looking to upgrade my Rostock uh, V1 to a V2. Uh, Chris is wants there to up upgrade from V1 to a V2. Is there an upgrade path? A V1 to the V2. Yes, we have a... Hi, John. Yeah, the upgrade kit. Yep. Let's let John Ole tackle that Sounds question. Good. <laughs> So this is John Ole. We've talked to him several times. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Let me get you both in there. Yeah, you have to bring it up real close. Okay. So John, why don't you tell us about this V1 to V2? Chris is on the other end of this. Hey Chris, see? how you doing? <laughs> so yeah, we've sold quite a few thousand of the Rostock Max V1s a long time ago, and when we came out with the V2, it took us about a month or two to really get all the bugs worked out. But we do have an upgrade kit, so even all of our early original all the way back to the Indiegogo campaign that we did almost three years ago now. Yeah. Um, anybody that's got an original V1 can get on our website and just go to the search bar at the top there and search for the V1 to V2 conversion, and that'll bring up the kit. I can't remember the price off the top of my head, but that brings you up to the, the all the new parts, all the injection molded uh, changes that we've done, like the arms and the carriages, uh, uh, new wood parts, so you get the new frame design and everything. So it's it's about a weekend project to convert over between the two machines. Sounds fun. <laughs> Chris is over there nodding his head. Four forty nine. Yeah. Four forty nine. He says it's four forty nine. Sound okay. Right? Oh, he pulled it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our internet's a little sketchy here at CES, so yeah. I'm surprised uh, the Google Hangouts are working. Actually, I've got a little. I see it. I've got a little secret ingredient. <laughs> So Very yeah, good. we are live, and this will be shooting up to YouTube as soon as it's yeah. finished. So uh, head out and check it out. So again, nice Thank meeting you. you guys in person. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good to meet you in person. <laughs> Thanks. And we'll Chris, see you around on another show sometime. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So, what was that, Steve? Uh, Midwest Rep Rap Festival. When's that? March 20th through the 22nd. Where's it at? Northern Indiana. Indiana. So yeah, the Midwest Rep Rap Festival is coming up here in another two months, something like that. So March 20th. 20th, 21st, and 22nd in Goshen, Indiana, right down the road from our shop. Last year, we had over a thousand people there, just hanging out with 3D printers. It's it's like the anti-trade show, quite the opposite of this one for sure. Wow. Sounds. Yeah, we get Prusa. Um, we've invited all of the main core rep rap developers. Uh, we've got, I'm sure Lowe's Bot will be back again. Um, just tons of people. If you ever get on the forums or the IRC channels or anything, now's a it's a really great opportunity to get together, put names to faces, learn about 3D printing. We have talks and seminars on some of the hot topics and, and what we see the state of you know, desktop 3D printers, where they're coming, where they're going. Sounds great. Tallman's going to be there this year. It's actually, oh. he uh, emailed me this morning, said it's his first ever appearance ever on a, he hasn't even gone to a Maker Fair or a show of any kind, so it's, it'll be neat to finally get to meet him. Great. Yeah. Well, I'll have to save up our pennies. <laughs> I almost yeah, couldn't afford this. We, we well, it's pretty uh, cheap out in the middle of the cornfield, so you got to be able to make it. you got to get Lars from Matter Control there, too. 
You said you have to get Lars from Matter Pixel. Matter, matter Pixel? Oh, no, matter, matter Pixel. Oh, Matter Hackers. Lars yeah, yeah. Matter Hackers. Yep, I've invited those guys, so we'll probably have... We tripled the size of it from the first year I put it on to the second year, so we're anticipating about that again. So probably two to 3,000 people. Yep. Wow. That's okay. awesome. I might have to so, fly out there. Get the date that. again. Yeah, Chris. It's March 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And if you go to MidwestRepRapFest.org, it's kind of a mouthful. But the, that'll give you all the information, directions, hotels. Uh, there's a map at the top. You can also register. There's no cost at all to come to the show. That just kind of helps us plan and see just how many crazy things we're going to do there. Excellent. Awesome. So maybe Chris will show up there, and I'll man the booth on the other There you go. There okay. You go. Well, great. All right. Thank thanks you again, guys. guys. I'm almost out of battery here. So thanks. <laughs> See you All right. All right. Well, we're, we're on an hour and a half. Uh, we could take a little break here. Uh, um, well, the problem is my battery is going to go. So let's okay. kind of keep going, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, you know, I don't know if um, you know if somebody wants to grab the mic. Otherwise, I'm just going to talk. Let people see. This is Envision Tech. Over here, uh, it looks like they have a, uh, looks like another SLA printer. Yeah, we met them at San Jose. They're they've been around for a while. Okay. Yeah, they, theirs is a little bit pricey, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, this is a thing I remember seeing. Yeah, they sell yeah, great SLA. Okay. So you know, it's quality. If you need something on a professional, uh, this is the direction to go. So let's turn around over here. We've got FSL 3D. Uh, again, another SLA printer. Looks like $34.99. Um, oh, okay. We know who these are. They're the ones that do the full spectrum laser. Oh, uh, the Pegasus. Yes. So this must be the Pegasus Touch. So there's a little screen coming up there. So let's see if we can get somebody to talk to real quick. Hi, I'm Mike from All Things 3D, and I've got Chris on the other end. We're live on our Google Hangouts, so if Can you'd I like to it? kind of give us a rundown. You know, we've heard about you, we've talked about you on our weekly podcast, and uh, so now we get to meet you in person. So kind of give us a rundown of the, the Pegasus. Awesome. Where is it standing now? And, I mean, yeah. it's been about a year. Well, so we just made a ahead. few announcements. Is this better? Yes. Great. Well, Mike, this is FSL 3D. Welcome to our brand new booth. What you can see here, we have two printers on display, um, another one kind of sitting off to the side. That is our Pegasus One, which is a printer that we launched last year at 2014 CES. We raised $819,000 on Kickstarter. We're very grateful for that. We are now expanding into DLP printers. So this is an early alpha prototype right here. Okay. You can see a partially assembled case. This is an early, early concept of our Phoenix professional line. Okay. We have two printers that we're planning to launch with, the Phoenix line. One of them is a UV LED DLP, uh, $49.99. That's got a build area that's approximately two inches by an inch and a half. And then we're also going to be launching one that's based off of a consumer projector. And that one is going to be $3,500 or $34.99. And that one will have a build area of about two and a half inches by three inches. Okay. We're also upgrading the Pegasus. The original Pegasus. We're going to be releasing a Pegasus 2. You can see, if you look inside, we're upgrading the motion system to use a ball screw now. Oh. Gives us much accurate, more accurate motion. It'll let us increase the speed. A few other things to note about this printer. We're switching to an injection molded head. It's a little bit easier to clean. And one of the big innovations that we're making uh, and we're announcing now at CES is our SuperVat. This particular VAT technology, you know, for those familiar with stereolithography 3D printers, know that your VAT, the container that holds your resin, wears out. Um, some of them wear out relatively quickly. The ones using the polydimethyl siloxane, that silicone coating, tends to cloud and wear out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. What we've actually done is we've developed a polymer. This is a special release coating that does not wear out. So this actually solves a lot of the problems that people are seeing with resin printers and that you have this consumable vat that's kind of expensive to replace and now you'll no longer need to do that thanks to the super vat. Wow, pretty neat. Chris, you got any questions while I'm here? Yeah, so uh, how, how have you shipped your Kickstarter backer rewards yet? Um, Chris is asking if you have shipped to your Kickstarter backers yet. Yeah, I think that we, Kickstarter, I think we closed all that up in October or November. Um, so we've been dealing with backlog right now, and starting this year, we're finally in stock. So our production is caught up with the order demand. Okay. Uh, we have 
for those that don't know, we're based here in Las Vegas. We're a local company, oh. and we have two assembly lines. We have our lasers. So that over there is yeah, our fifth gen desktop that laser. That's made here in Las okay. Vegas. Uh, we also have the Pegasus assembly line here in Las Vegas. We employ about 15 assembly line workers making these machines. So maybe you can squash a rumor before it continues to be spread. Someone mentioned to me that we can only use your resins. Is that true? I, I didn't quite catch that. You have to just speak uh, up for me. I apologize. I got feedback coming in, so I must oh, be yeah. talking quieter. Everybody's saying that. Um, there's a rumor that uh, you can only use your resins. Is that true, or um, if I are there other manufacturers that are making resins? So, like almost every other every other resin 3D printer that I know, uh, due to the particulars of the chemical reaction, each resin is tuned for its machine. So right now, the only resin that works in this machine is our resin. If you were to drop in a Formlabs resin or a B9 resin, the way that our laser moves, the algorithms that we're using to draw the actual parts, those resins wouldn't give you good results. They so, probably wouldn't even cure. Are you familiar with Made Solid or Maker Juice? I've heard of those companies, okay. yes. So if they were to make something that matched uh, your chemical process, uh, would it be able to run on yours? Yeah, the the users the settings aren't exposed to the user. Um, one thing that we've seen is we've tested a lot of third-party resins. There are other companies um, besides those two, and one of the things that we found is that the results that you'll get, just due to the fact that we're using some pretty advanced algorithms, we really strongly suggest that people use our resin. The printer is designed to be used with our resin. Uh, we're using some pretty high-quality components. The raw materials that go into these resins are actually choosing the right raw materials, choosing something that's higher end, actually makes a really big difference in the quality of the final product. So what does it cost for a liter? Right now it's $100 per liter. Okay. Okay, Chris, any other questions? Awesome. Thanks so much. Oh, great. Well, thank yeah, you very much. Thank you very much for stopping by. Uh -huh. Thank you. Andy. Bye. All right, let's let's head over by MakerBot and um, uh, keep my camera. Don't want to make our audience sick. It's like walking around a trade show without actually being there. Huh? Yeah. I feel like I'm walking around a real trade show. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I would have been really smart, I would have created an Oculus Rift uh, stereo image, and then you could put your Rift on, and you could actually be here. Except so for every time I ever walk around a trade show, I'm like sleep deprived. Whereas like right now, so I, I feel I feel fine. <laughs> you feel rather fresh. Huh? So right now we're in the MakerBot booth, and uh, let's see if we can get somebody. I don't. T I didn't tell you yesterday. I talked to Jenny. Um, remember we we had some information on our show about that MakerBot is coming out with a new portable scanner. Do you remember talking about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I presented that information to one of the writers who then put it up on the site and I guess they got in hot water with MakerBot and they actually mentioned me by name and they said, and actually Jenny said, well the, the sources weren't uh, validated I guess, I don't remember exact words <laughs> and I just kind of kept it to myself because actually when you talk to the CEO of the company who makes the scanner that kind of validates it in my, my book but I let it slide and acted stupid so that uh, I could hopefully get some more conversation from them. So it looks like they're... It doesn't look like I'm going to get anybody to talk to. But we do have an interview with Jenny, hopefully later in the month, uh, unless she's completely pissed off at me and doesn't want to talk to me. But uh, these are the actual printers. Remember, there's our scanner there. It's interesting that so many people went with that dual scanner. If you remember, there's a the guy in, uh, I want to say Bulgaria, but that's not it. Uh, Bobby or Litva, I can't remember the name now, um, that's got something that looks almost identical to it. Interesting. Um, and then here's their little mini replicator. And you can go out to their website and get the pricing. I personally think they're a little bit on the high side. But if you can tell, it's really it's an ABS build quality. Uh, this is their new MakerBot uh, replicator. Um, remember, I have a MakerBot 2. Uh, so this replaced the MakerBot 2, and then over or the Replicator 2, and then over here we've got the 2X. Um, you remember we kind of had somebody bring one in. It's their 2 extruder version, but people have problems with it, um, so maybe they've refined that. And then here's their Z18. If I remember correctly, this sells for like $6,000, but man, seeing it in person, it looks pretty impressive. Uh, it's 
large. They look like a small refrigerator. You see that there? Wow. Chris, yeah. you still with yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So this is their booth. Um, as as you know, CES has more than just 3D printing. They've got all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, look at this. You know, MakerBot also carries a lot of their own P, um, filament, and they have PLA and ABS, which is interesting since they tried to go more into PLA. And I actually like their PLA. It's good stuff, but it's a little bit on the pricey side. But I've never had any problems using their PLA. Um, but like I said. What is it? I can't remember the name of the company. That Polymax, man, I love that stuff. That stuff prints well. Okay, so here we've got some actual samples. Oh, they made a little little town. Can you see that there? Mm-hmm. Uh, how cute. Hmm. Yeah, but it looks like standard STL printing. You know, I have to give credit to Maker Gear. Once I've turned to change out the extruder. That thing really prints well. I think I showed you some of the stuff that I printed off of that with the Polymax. So we're going to keep heading down here, see if there's something else. That, oh, look, there's a DWS. I'm going to go ahead and go over here. We, t we talked about this, didn't we? XPad. Wow, that's a nice looking SLA printer. Let's see if we can get in there to talk to somebody. Hi. You want to give us a little bit of a rundown? I'm from All Things 3D, and we're doing a live podcast right now. So I'll give it to Sylvia. So kind of tell us about this. This thing is really nice looking. Um, what does it do? Yeah, hi. We are DWS, and uh, we are entering in the market with a 3D printer for a consumer level. It's the XFOB from DWS Lab. And uh, it's $5,000 plus what it will be uh, delivered starting from April, April. 2015. Yeah. So we have 10 different materials. What the country are you from? I noticed. We are from Italy. Italy. Okay. Yeah, yes, I think uh, I saw we are yeah. based in Italy and yeah. we develop, produce, and sell the printer, the materials, and the software as well. well that's a nice looking printer. Really well designed. So the build size looks fairly large. What's the build size on this? Yeah, it's 180 millimeters of diameter and 180 of height. So okay. uh, it's pretty Can big. I poke my camera in there a little bit yeah. to get a better view. Oops. Can you see that, Chris? Yeah. Sorry. So what's unique about this printer? What um, is it a laser base or is yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. There's a laser from the bottom that is solidifies it, uh, a liquid material okay. that is inside the tank. It is injected by a cartridge system. Okay. So uh, you can choose between ten different materials. Also, a casting one, casting wax, uh, rubber like ABS with different colors, transparent materials. And you solidify it layer by layer. The layers can go from uh, 10 uh, microns to 100 microns. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, so you have high definition and smooth surfaces. And so uh, most SLA is very slow. What's the performance? Uh, up well, it's not that low. Um, um, go ahead and make sure the mic is by you. Yes. Yeah, for example, is uh, around six hours for this model. Oh. That actually is very And uh, you have a really, really smooth surface. Okay. Actually. You mind if I touch it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Do you see that, Chris? Yeah. Let me see yeah, and put it in the camera. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it is extremely smooth, Chris. Also, very nice. uh, we I have a your, different uh, techniques yes. to remove the support. Did you notice that Form Labs came out with a new system very similar to this? Yeah. And that really, I have a Form 1. But looking at something else, and this has been the my opinion, the biggest problem with it because the supports were so large that it left little... No, uh, now it's defense. really, really easy to remove. Great. Also, because we developed that one. you have a product with them software? removed that I can take a look at? Because normally, I don't, you don't have that on the little RP. For example, this one is the rubber okay, light. So, okay, so this is the flexible material. You see that, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that's actually, man, that, that, that's like injected molded quality, Chris. Thank you. All right, so there's some, um, yeah, I see it here. Well, we didn't 
Okay, so you have to sand it. Well, but that's important though because the we wanted to show actually okay. our feathers. Yeah, so I mean it looks a little better, but yeah, I think you can't get away with that. Um, and yes, you do have to sand it. Uh, but the problem is when you sand it with most SLAs, it, it, it uh, kind of ruins the finish. So I've always had to either paint or use some other finish on it. Uh, very nice. So $5,000. When will it be available? April, right? April 2015. Okay. Uh, great. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was kind of... Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here's... Oh, look at this. Looks like they've got a smaller one. You see this? Yeah. So I'm wondering if that is of a lower cost. But as you can see there, this is about the little RP size. But you know, not to, to keep bringing up little RP, but man, what you get for the money after looking at some of these, Brad better start churning those things out, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we're about almost ready to wrap it up. Chris, I know that it's been hard on your feet. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. So what's the price on this little one here? Online. Okay, so this would be much more expensive. Yeah, okay. it goes from $10,000, the okay. small one, to $200. Okay, so, but this is your professional line. Yeah, that you're it, it is divided into jewelry, jewelry, dental, and biomedical application, uh, and industrial design. You okay. can find some samples there. If okay, you want to see it. great. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Okay, well, uh, I've got my hands full here. Let's see what else we've got here. Oh, we got another high resolution booth here. You see this? Yeah. Yeah, so notice that they're using this stereoscopic process. Um, I did an interview yesterday with Fuel 3D, and if my batteries don't run out, I'll probably head over there before we end it. But can you see what they're doing there? Yeah, sure can. So they, they looks like they took images from the front and the two sides. Interesting. Hi. Maybe Dan can give us a little bit of a rundown. Hi, Dan. You want to give us a little bit of a talk? I'm from All Things 3D. We do a podcast and YouTube channel. Okay. So uh, what is it that you do here? Bring the mic. Well, we make, a, we make a variety of products, mostly in 3D. We have uh, a lot of dental products, orthodontic products, maxillofacial surgery, plastic surgery. But we do facial scanning, instant facial scanning, uh, and we do uh, diagnosis and treatment planning for for uh, different fields, as well as we can use these field, use the scans, facial scans for things like um, cosmetics and all kinds of things that we can do with full body scanning, and it's instant, simultaneous instant capture. And then we also have high resolution 3D printing and very fast printing. We can print a dental model, for example, in 12 minutes. So and it's uh, so smooth it looks like injection molded compared to printing. Wow, it looks really nice. Um, so what kind of technique do you use in your 3D scanning? I notice you've got a nice looking booth here. One, what's its price? And then second, um, what type of technology are you working with? Well, we use, uh, we are, use our own variation of uh, stereo matching and, um, and uh, photogrammetry, but it also uh, has some unique characteristics that we built into it for um, simultaneous capture. And that's the biggest thing. It's simultaneous, instant, automated capture. You click one button, and it automatically does anywhere from just a face on up to an entire body 360 uh, without any processing, handling, or anything that, you have, that the human has to do. Okay. So may I ask what it would cost to get something like that? I'm looking at the results there. It looks very impressive. So what does this cost? Uh, this unit that's here is about 24000 Uh We have systems, handheld systems that... Ninety-nine, depending on how many cameras and what quality cameras. So you support. have a handheld that's a thousand dollars. Do you have that here? Uh, we don't have it here. Okay. All right. Do you have a business card? I might want to look you up and ask you to, to come on and do a longer interview with us if that's possible. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I guess I did that. You want to get a scan? Um, no, I won't have time. Here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hand you that. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, actually, I'll give you my card too. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, we do a lot of scanning and. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at the quality of these, and. Uh, like a photo, you're pouring, you know, it's like. Yeah, you can zoom in on it, and it has such high detail that it actually has. Uh, you can see the pores in the skin. Yeah, I, you can I noticed zoom in that. And see such high detail. You can see the pores in the skin, little blood vessels in the skin. It's very great for dermatology as well because you can actually monitor the size of the of moles and uh, disfigurations in the skin. Yeah, and it seems like it's almost real time, like yeah. 1 60th, 100th right. of a second. Yeah, it, the, the capture time is actually anywhere from 1 millisecond up to 60 milliseconds, depending on the cameras and so forth. Well, we I've done some interviews with our tech and then a group in Dube, um in Germany, but they want eighty to a hundred thousand dollars for their booths. Very reasonable pricing. Right. So yes, I would like to get an interview with at a later date, Dan. Okay. So thank you very much. Excellent. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Did you really see that uh, that gentleman? I mean, the quality was superb. Wow. Pretty neat. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep walking. Um, hopefully, I don't stop again before my battery. I'm just going to go until the batteries run out. I just dropped something. Hang on. Uh. Oh, look. You know these people. Is this Dassault? Yes. So I don't know what they have here. You know what? I'm going to have to ditch this. I don't have any room. Uh, so are you familiar with 3D Excite? Have you heard of this? 3D Excite? No, I don't know about... Is it 3D animation? Looks like it. Um, well, like I said, I'm almost out of battery, so I'm going to go over here. Oh, it looks like another company. 3D Print Life. You see that there? Yeah. That, oh, it's the Cube Pro. Okay, oh, it's 3D like systems. 3D systems. So that's our Cube Pro. We've kind of talked about that on the show. Yeah, it pretty much looks like what it does in the pictures. Um, man, that's fairly large. What was the price on that? Didn't they drop it to like 3,500, 4,000 for their dual excluder, if I remember, or their single excluder, and then it went up? But you also have to take into consideration where we're, I think they're they're working on the uh, uh, they're doing a uh, you know they. It's proprietary material. That's true. So you'd have to get, and there's a little filament cartridge there. And right. it's normally about twice the cost of normal stuff. But right. somebody will probably hack it. But it is a nice looking machine, and it's fully enclosed. Okay, let's go a little further. Oh, excuse me. Toner plastic. Never heard of them. Okay, now we're into. <laughs> you see that? It's the mask. Yeah, that's kind of you watching it. <laughs> the guy's in bed now. Not not what I was thinking he was going to show. Probably good. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's another view from another end. Oh, look, there's a little doodler. Uh, you see that there? Yeah. 3D doodler. So yeah, I want to get one of these things. I'm having a little technical problem. Hang on, Chris. <laughs> so you know I'm doing this whole damn it. I'm doing this whole thing by myself and it's So the three doodler is the little pen that is like a hot end and you load in a little stick of filament and you can draw with plastic in 3D. It's kind of kind of fun. Yep. Well, I don't know if your, your image looks as good as what my image looks here, but you know, the quality from this Logitech 920 has been pretty reasonable and we got a nice wide angle. So hopefully you and the audience is getting a good opportunity to be here at CES with us in the 3D printer.
And it looks like we just dropped out. So uh, we're looking at we we just came on the two hour mark, and uh, we are doing live. We have Mike chiming in live from the CES booth, or from the CES show in Las Vegas that's going on today is January eighth, twenty fifteen. Thanks to our viewers that are joining us live. Um, we really uh, we're doing this for you, and uh, we couldn't do it without you, with all our listeners. Um, and hope you are learning as much as I, I am. I think we're going to try to pick it up here again maybe uh, later today and tomorrow um, to try to give you even more coverage um, of the CES show, and we will see you a little bit later on. So uh, stay tuned on our Google Hangout uh, uh, watch list or our YouTube channel, and you'll see uh, an update um, for when our next segment will be on. We'll be uh, walking around more or Mike is live in Las Vegas, and I'm here back in the studio, and we'll be, uh, we'll be reporting live from CES. All right, we'll see you soon.